Next, I'm happy to welcome Ewan Averstad, CEO at Hemcheck. Welcome, Ewan. Thank you very much. And I'm going to present to you Hemcheck today. A short introduction. Hemcheck was formed in 2010. It was listed in 2017. The focus has always been on hemolysis, which is the most frequent uh, error when you analyze blood. Uh, we have developed a set of unique products for point of care hemolysis detection uh, and we are in the process of commercializing this. Uh, we have uh, distribution agreements in 15 countries and uh, we are expanding uh, the number of distribution partners uh, as we speak. Uh, we are now also focusing on uh, raising capital, uh, which is something that we will do during June. So, uh, our vision uh, is hemolysis-free blood sampling to, to ensure safe and effective healthcare delivery. And this is something that we live by and something that we think is very important because in the end our products will improve the quality uh, for patients. So what is hemolysis? So hemolysis is when the red blood cells burst and leak out their content into the rest of the blood volume. Uh, and this can happen outside of the body, but also inside of the body. Outside of the body is called in vitro hemolysis, and inside of the body is called in vivo hemolysis. Um, the, the most um, cases of hemolysis happens outside of the body, uh, at the blood sampling uh, or during transport. Uh, and why is this important? Uh, it's important because it affects the analysis that you perform on the blood samples afterwards. Uh, and uh, it can increase or decrease the values uh, of those analyses falsely. So if you don't control for this, you can end up having uh, the wrong results given to physicians, uh, which then might give uh, or take the wrong decisions uh, on, on patients, which can of course be harmful. Um, and this is, as I said, the most uh, frequent uh, problem globally when analyzing blood. Uh, in terms of hemolysis happening inside of the body, in vivo hemolysis. This is very specific to some patient groups, uh, for example, patients that are on circulatory support, like ECMO patients or cardiac uh, surgery patients, or patients with very specific uh, conditions like uh, severe burns or uh, intoxications, etc. Uh, and here hemolysis is a marker uh, uh, for something that you then need to do. So it's a di you can uh, use the products for diagnostic use them. Whereas for in vitro hemolysis, it's more a quality control to ensure that the sample that you analyze later on uh, have the right quality. So how is hemolysis detection done today? Uh, most laboratories uh, have this as a standard feature that they, uh, uh, they check for hemolysis because of these potential issues. Uh, and uh, that is done automatically in most cases or visually in, in some cases. Uh, the issue with this is that it's separated from the patient in time and space, so to say. So there's lead times involved. Typically you would receive results maybe one or two hours uh, in an acute situation later f uh, from when you took the blood. Uh, and then you need to redraw a new sample. So this creates uh, these lead times to the correct results. Uh, in the point of care setting, which is uh, very important and where more and more instruments are placed, you typically don't have hemolysis detection built into these instruments, even though the results um, can be impacted by hemolysis uh, and hemolysis is quite frequent in these samples that you analyze at the point of care as well. So this is a clear quality deficiency uh, in, in uh, the current uh, ways of working in today's healthcare. Um, so, what that means is basically that every day uh, the wrong results are given quite frequently to physicians and nurses uh, uh, overall, uh, all over the world. And uh, uh, that's, that's uh, a big problem, of course. And then there's a third area where you don't do analysis directly. Uh, you save samples for later, for example, in biobanking. Uh, and uh, there it can be quite important to check for hemolysis. And this is not often uh, done. Uh, you, they might only have uh, checks for on some analysis uh, or some samples uh, or uh, they actually don't check at all. So in summary, what, what are the issues with hemolysis? Um, well, patients are at risk. Uh, they can receive delayed, uh, the wrong or no diagnosis and treatment. Uh, it's also a um, predictor of outcomes for certain patients. Uh, so this is the main part and it's quite important. 
Uh, it also creates, in, creates increased lead times, uh, which is in itself bad for the patient, but it can also impact other patients. For example, in an emergency department, uh, if you have a crowding situation, more lead times doesn't help that situation. You also need to retake the sample, and in many cases that means that you need to puncture the patient again, which most patients don't like. Uh, it can also be hard for children to, to, to be punctured again, or it can also be difficult to obtain a sample from, from for example, elderly patients. Um, it's also important that, to note that uh, you also increase the, the workload on the staff, uh, and staff are in, health, in a healthcare setting is typically, uh, well, they have a high workload already, so this doesn't really help. Uh, and importantly also, uh, the costs go up. Uh, there are many different studies on this. Studies that look at total costs, um, they estimate total cost to be around 100 euros per reacted sample. So it's quite um, big costs involved. And in an ED, I should say, you, it's quite often that you have 5 to 12 percent of the relevant samples being hemolyzed. Should also mention that if you, of course, store samples for a long time in a biobank and haven't checked for hemolysis, this can impact the research done uh, later on, which is uh, very important for the output of that research. So, the products. Uh, we have developed a set of different uh, tests, uh, which together with uh, an instrument, a reader, um, will help uh, detect hemolysis at the patient side. So, the system is very fast and it is based on a filtration technology which we have patented. We uh, can separate out plasma from whole blood in one or two seconds. Uh, and then we analyze the color of the plasma in the instrument. Uh, the current techniques, how you do this is basically that you centrifuge a sample. It takes 10 minutes and then you need to do some extra steps. So we are much faster uh, since we do this on whole blood. Uh, we have one consumable for vacuum tubes and two different other consumables for syringes uh, and uh, you can see them in front of me here as well. Um, we have patents as I said and that those are focused on the filtration technology what's in those one-time consumables and we don't see any other let's say relevant or similar product that can, can do the same thing that we do. Collaborations and evidence is quite important when you have a new product and you launch a new product. So we have focused uh, historically but also currently on uh, doing clinical studies uh, and uh, setting up collaborations with different entities. Here's a couple of examples. Uh, we've done studies at the Westeros Hospital, Karlstad Hospital and Kapje St. Jörn Hospital proving the performance of the products but also showing that we, when applying our products you can lower the incidence of hemolyzed blood samples arriving at the laboratory. Uh, a, few, a few more recent examples is uh, uh, the study we did in Barcelona and in, um, in uh, the UK with the, at Sheffield and those also uh, provide evidence uh, locally on the performance of the, of the products. And this is quite important because we often get requests for what have you done in France from a French hospital or what have you done in Germany from a German hospital. So building this local evidence is quite important and we have a lot of these things in place now. Uh, we have also different customers, um, for example university hospitals like Tartu University Hospital in Estonia, Salgensk University Hospital in Sweden etc. But also more international organizations like FIND, the Foundation for Innovative New Diagnostics, uh, which is based in Switzerland and, and uh, sponsored by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, WHO, etc. Uh, we also have uh, a range of different uh, distribution agreements uh, that covers 15 countries today uh, and those we are looking to expand. Uh, and we are now running different studies and user tests in addition to the customers that we already have uh, in more than 10 countries. A bit about the market. It's quite large because blood samples is quite important for patient management in, in special hospitals. So we estimate the total relevant addressable market to be two and a half billion samples in the US and Europe alone. Uh, and most part of that is related to uh, what we call the V-test for vacuum tubes um, and a smaller part for the BGS test and the S test which are related to syringes. And uh, Money-wise, this is 
translated into roughly 30 billion sec in, in total addressable potential in, in the US and Europe, where we have the patents. Then you can also segment the market uh, because some segments uh, have, let's say, a bigger need and there's more value for them to use our products. So for uh, the in vitro hemolysis case, when, the, when our products are used to improve the quality, you can look at segments that have a high incidence of uh, hemolysis uh, or, and or a high cost for each sample that are hemolyzed. And for example, emergency departments score high on both of those criteria. So that's one key segment that we are focusing on. In addition to, for example, laboratories, which are often involved in the decisions on which instruments to be uh, implemented at the hospital. But I should also say that most segments are actually relevant because you can have hemolysis occurring at any time you draw blood. And then in addition, uh, when it's uh, clinically relevant for diagnostic purposes to check for hemolysis, in those cases, that's also another area which we, I mentioned earlier. So for example, uh, patients on circulatory support. <clears throat> in terms of our uh, current focus efforts uh, and our roadmap going forward, our core focus is improving sales uh, and also getting more distribution agreements in place. Supporting that, we are uh, launching the new products uh, that we see marked in uh, January this, this year, uh, the BGS test and also the uh, C marking for diagnostic use, which we did just a few weeks back. <coughs> in addition to that, we are building up more local evidence in the local markets to provide references. Uh, and uh, importantly, we are also looking at uh, creating strategic partnerships with larger companies to help us in the commercialization efforts. <clears throat> in terms of uh, uh, the, the uh, roadmap going forward, earlier we uh, focused a bit more on our own sales, uh, staying close to the, to the customers, uh, but now we are transitioning towards uh, the, a, a more clear-cut distribution setup. Uh, so we are expanding the, the number of distributors uh, and the focus is currently Europe and uh, uh, the Middle East since we have the C marking <clears throat> and the US is a next step. Uh, we haven't started the FDA process yet, uh, but that's something that we have on the radar. In terms of the upcoming rights issue, uh, the main um, uh, part of, of uh, those proceeds would be used to uh, continue operations and continue the sales efforts that we are doing and we have a good let's say trend now with, with more and more customers um, coming in the, in the last few months. In addition to that we want to uh, put more funds aside to increase the efforts on, <coughs> on sales and also business development uh, for example uh, the potential of creating these uh, strategic collaborations. Uh, in addition to that, we want to do some uh, more work on product development. Uh, for example, integrating a screen into our instrument, which now only provides binary response. Uh, you have to have a plugged in screen to get the um, quantitative values. Uh, so that's one integration that we're looking for. Uh, and also uh, in the investments into the production capacity and more efficient production. <coughs> So, in summary, uh, we have a unique solution to a global problem. Uh, there's no uh, real competitors uh, with similar uh, products. Sales have started and there's global potential. Uh, we have activities in more than 15 countries uh, and this is expanding uh, as we speak. Uh, we have a production and logistics setup that is in place for scale up. And worth mentioning is also that uh, the pandemic has uh, had an effect on us, uh, but we see a better trend now after the restrictions have been lifted. So I'm quite positive based on that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, you and for that presentation. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the e, in recent announcement of the CE marking uh, for um, diagnostic purposes. Yes. Uh, why is this significant? Well, it, it opens up uh, a new market, which we, we uh, couldn't sell to before. Uh, so yeah, more potential volume, but also higher margins because the, the price levels are higher in those segments. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, the, uh, the new IVDR uh, yeah. regulations, has it been challenging to comply with these? 
I, I think for most companies it has been challenging, uh, but we are in compliance now, so we have done that journey since a year back, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's 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 been a journey, but we're there. Yeah, smooth from now on. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, you never know. <laughs> yeah, um, I was wondering, what's your strategy for maximi maximizing commercial value for your products? Well. We the strategy has been that, uh, earlier to stay close to the, to different customers to <coughs> re, let's say uh, get their feedback and then let's say place the products in the best possible way in the market. Now we're focusing more on the distribution setup, uh, so hence it's placing them in the right segments. I talked a bit about the segments where you have the most value, and then price them accordingly. So we're we're trying to find the different segments that are willing to pay the most, so to say, and have the biggest need. <coughs> and that's how we create value. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I should say, it's not only that we can get sales, we want to help the patients in the end, because if they use our products, the quality will be better, you would have decreased lead times, you would have decreased costs as well. So it's, uh, from our point of view, a win-win perspective uh, from both our side and the healthcare uh, systems point mm. of view. Absolutely. And uh, finally, what are the milestones you're most looking forward to uh, towards the end of 2020, 2022? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we have this rights issue now, of course, which is important. Uh, but then we have uh, goals, internal goals on, on sales. So, so we, yeah, th that's our main focus. More distributor agreements and more, let's say, bigger types of customers. Uh, we have a lot of smaller customers right now, mm. but we want to turn them into more steady big customers mm -hmm. well great well uh, thank you so much for your presentation again and uh, we wish you all the best with your upcoming milestones thank you very much